Hey guys, this is Dr. Sangeeta and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patshala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way. And today's topic, we are going to talk about very important topic in removable partial dentures. So today's topic, we are going to talk about the clasp. So without further ado, let's get started. this video we are going to talk about the direct retainer clasp what is clasp what are the different parts of a clasp and what is a clasp assembly how the how the clasp assembly is differentiated from the clasp so guys before we get started make sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our future videos talking about the direct retainer what is the purpose of a direct retainer as the name suggests direct retainer it is directly going to retain the removable partial denture. That means it is that component of a partial denture that is used for retention of the removable partial denture or RPD. So it contains a clasp assembly. What do you mean by a clasp assembly? What are the component of a clasp assembly? So basically this clasp is retaining. Suppose this is a tooth. This is the occlusal view, right? And this is a gingival view. Now, once we have from the surveyor, once we have surveyed, suppose this is the surveying tool or the carbon marker. So, this is how we are going to survey, right? So, the highest point will get marked like this. See, uh, let me show you. See, both of the things are marked. So, this is how the line is going to come, right? The height of contour. So, first of all, we are going to mark the height of contour in the surveying. Now that we know the height of contour. Now, actually, my mom is not letting me take potatoes anymore because she's like, every day you take potatoes. And no, those of you guys who have been watching my videos since long, then you know, lot of things I'm explaining on potatoes because she wanted to cook tomorrow, tomorrow potato. So, let's coming back again to the topic. Now, See, the, suppose this is a tooth. Now, first of all, we are marking the height of contour. So, why are we marking the height of contour? Suppose, if I am giving a clasp, right? If I am giving a clasp above the height of contour, now what happens? It will not sit. The RPD will not sit, right? Because it will just be outside. Suppose, if this is a maxillary teeth, now what happens when the patient opens the mouth? Comes out. The RPD comes out. There is no retention. So, what do you, what do we want? We want that there is a retention in our RPD. So, how do we want retention? We want the undercut below the height of contour. So, once there is an undercut below the height of contour and once suppose this is the maxillary teeth. So, this is below the height of contour. Now, what happens? It is not coming out because the height of contour is obstructing it. It is not letting the assembly letting the partial denture come out. So, this is the reason that we want favorable undercuts. So, what do we do? We give a clasp. So, there are many parts of clasp. So, first of all, talk about clasp assembly. So, clasp assembly consists of the clasp. It consists of the rest. It consists of minor connector. Uh, so, uh, different kind of rest. We have cingulum, incisal, occlusal rest. So, this clasp is basically engaged, is going to engage the tooth surface. And it will not let the removable partial denture come out. It is going to re retain the removable partial denture, removable dental processes by engaging into the undercut below the height of contour. So, this is how it is going to work, right? So, the height of contour is explained by the prothero theory, prothero cone theory. So, what does this prothero cone theory says that we have two cones, right? This is also a frequently asked question in two marks. So, this prothero cone theory says that a molar posterior teeth is more like a cone. So, there is more like the two cones sharing a single base. So, you can just mark this line as the base and there are two cones, right? So, it tells that the line which is the base they are sharing is our height of contour, which the term is given by the Kennedy. As we know, Kennedy is everywhere, Kennedy classification and everywhere. So, we have two things. One is the surface which is above the height of contour, the surface which is below the height of contour, the surface which is above the height of contour 
is the supra bulge right supra means above bulge means bulging bulging means any prominent part so any protuberance so this is the bulging which is the outward portion which is the highest point which is the height of contour right so basically height of contour is our highest point everywhere if you want to mark the height of contour it is going to be the bulging point it is going to be the most prominent point suppose in this case if you want to mark the height of contour this is going to be the height of contour the most prominent point right so talking about again the prothero theory so we have uh, the supra bulge and the infra bulge why do we need to read all this because we are going to engage our clasp according to this now talking about the parts of the class first of all clasp assembly we have a rest right so rest if rest is not there imagine what is the purpose of rest to understand the purpose of rest first understand this suppose this is a clasp so i have this my finger this finger uh, four finger is going to be all uh, now remember in uh, this index finger is always going to be my retentive this one is going to be the reciprocal arm right so when i am going to engage a clasp in a tooth now what happens if rest is not there now this uh, the both of these clasps will keep on going down 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 and it will go down so it will reach up till the gingiva so we want something to stop it so if rest is there suppose what happens if rest is there right so otherwise when a force was applied it was it was going down but what happens when rest is there it is going to stop so this is actually providing a vertical stop right so this rest purpose is to provide the vertical support it prevents the clasp assembly going down it prevents the whole assembly from the tissue ward movement it is preventing the processes the tissue ward movement right this is the purpose of the rest now talking about the clasp now clasp we have the retentive arm the reciprocal arm so both are going to be opposite to each other retentive arm is the arm which is going to retent which is going to retain the processes that means it is going to actively participate in the process of retention that means suppose if you want to construct a building okay if you want to construct a huge building how do you do it any building how do if you have seen any house then first of all we built something underground right so that is the base so what do we want if we want support if we want to provide a support system so we make sure that roots are strengthened right so if we are supporting anything from down that means from above it will not move so this is the work which we are doing in the retention how are we doing the retention the retentive arm is going below the height of contour it is going to engage into the undercut now there are three things right one is the rest one is the uh, retentive arm one is the reciprocal arm now how it works is that rest is going to rest that's that's the that is why the name is rest it is going to rest on the either occlusal surface incisal surface so basically it is going to rest now this now you have to uh, observe this now if you see if you see now i guess little bit better so when suppose this is the tooth when we are giving a clasp so how are we giving the clasp so basically the retentive the this is the retentive arm this one thumb is the reciprocal arm right so this retentive arm actually has three parts the end part we call it the terminal right always terminal set airport so the end part is our terminal where the it where it ends so this part is the terminal part the end part now the end part is going to be flexible it will move not the rest of the retentive arm is going to move so this is the most flexible part which one the terminal then we have the body right so the body will originate from the from the whole assembly now what happens the retentive terminal will go beyond it will end so the terminal will end below the height of contour so this is how it is going to look like if you can see the retentive terminal is going to engage below the height of contour and the reciprocal arm is somewhere close to the height of contour it is actually 
somewhere close to the height of counter but little bit above as you can see little bit above we can see this line and the rest is going to rest on the occlusal surface like this right so this is how our whole class assembly is going to we are going to put like this if you can see the terminal is going below the height of counter so whenever we are putting the clasp so the first thing which is going to engage is the reciprocal arm so once see once we are once we are putting the whole of the clasp so like this first of all it is going to engage from the reciprocal end and then the retentive will go like this so first thing which is going to touch is our reciprocal arm right so this is how we are going to place it the retentive arm it has three parts the terminal body and in between there is a shoulder so the, we have the reciprocal arm so the retentive arm the reciprocal arm the reciprocal arm will be at the gingival one third level basically it will be little bit above the height of contour and the retentive arm will the uh, body will start above the height of contour and it will terminate below the height of counter so the terminal end will be below the height of counter and this is how it is going to hold the teeth this is how we are going to construct the clasp like this so rest will rest on the occlusal surface the reciprocal arm will be above the height of counter and the retention retentive arm will start above the height of counter so this is the body part body part will be above the height of counter shoulder will be somewhere close to the height of counter and terminal retentive terminal will go below the height of contour so this is guys about the retentive arm the reciprocal arm now if you can look back in the in your books in the diagram and you will understand each and everything so this is how it is going to be so this is the rest as you can see the retentive arm so the, this retentive arm this part is the retentive terminal which is below the height of contour suppose this is the height of contour and it will be Uh, projecting upward and the reciprocal arm is which is above the height of contour so this is how not exactly but somehow this is how it is going to be now what happens this reciprocal arm it is going to stabilize the lateral forces first talk about the retentive arm what is the purpose of retentive arm it is going to provide the retention right so it is going to engage in the undercut and it is going to provide the retention so if the tooth surface is bigger that means this arm is going to be bigger if the retentive arm is bigger that means we have got enough of surface area if we have got more surface area that means we have more flexibility so that is good for us so that is actually it is going to be more retentive see the more is flexibility the more is length the more is flexibility right so the more is flexibility it is good for us for the retention purpose so this is the concept here so if the tooth is bigger so the length is bigger flexibility is going to be more but reverse with the diameter if the wire is thicker that means it is not going to be flexible if it is not flexible then it is kind of a rigid and it is not that retentive if we are talking about retention specifically and what happens see that the type of clasp also matters because if you are giving a round wire clasp for example uh, if you are giving uh, the cross section is, is round wire for example if you are giving a wrought wire clasp a round wrought wire clasp so that means it has more flexibility so if you are giving a, a ca if a clasp from a cast if you are casting a clasp then means that means it is not that flexible so actually all these things matters then the stability so what is going to provide the stability all the components of the clasp assembly except the terminal which except the terminal which is flexible right so because the terminal is flexible it is going to engage in the undercut and provide retention but rest of the things other than rest of the things which are above the height of contour that is except the terminal end of the retentive arm except that everything is going to provide the stability because that is how it is going to be stable it is uh, stability means it is not going to resist it is not going to displace right if any horizontal forces are coming if any rotation forces are coming retention means suppose if this is a maxillary teeth retention means what if if see what if this clasp come out like this that means it is not retentive 
so this is the retention that means against the force of gravity if it is resisting against the force of gravity that means it has got a good retention right so support stability we have covered support what is providing the support support is provided by the rest so this is how it is providing the support then we also have reciprocation which is provided with the retentive arm so that is the purpose of the retentive arm actually it is providing us with the lateral forces so because it is above the height of contour so it is overcoming all the lateral forces which are coming suppose imagine if this arm is not there then what happens all the when the lateral forces come this component is going to the retentive component will move laterally right so it is actually providing support it is actually providing stability from the lateral forces also it is encircling if you can see the whole of the clasp assembly is actually encircling the tooth more than 180 degrees so also it works on the encirclement principle and the difference here is between the clasp we put in the rpd and we class we put in the ortho treatment is that when we are doing ortho treatment we are um, we are adapting very actively so there is very tight binding so that tooth movement takes place but what happens if we are giving active clasp in rpd then there is going to be the tooth movement which we do not want so we are going to adapt the clasp just passively just just slightly lovely without some care we are just going to just put it on the tooth we are not putting forces right otherwise the tooth movement will occur so guys these all are the requirement you can say or the principles you can say of the clasp assembly basically the retention stability support reciprocation encirclement and passivity so the retention is provided by the terminal end so more the flexible more is the retention more the length more is the retention more the uh, undercut more is the retention so like that okay actually depend on the type of undercut then we have stability so stability is it is not displacing either the horizontal forces or the rotational forces how it is stable rest of the things other than the retentive terminal then we have the support support is provided with a rest then we have reciprocation it is provided by counteracting forces uh, which are from the reciprocal arm then we have encirclement and passivity so i hope that you guys are clear with the clasp and the clasp assembly the parts and the principles so if you have enjoyed the video then give it a thumbs up and also you can comment in the comment section below and guys now there is a link in the description below to support me on Paytm as well as on PayPal to make free videos for you guys and to make free notes. So guys, so guys, till then, keep studying, keep reading, keep learning and I'll see you soon in the next video.